What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today once again we're we'll doing another player comparison video, but this time it's going to be a little bit different, as we're going to be comparing the same player, 2016 Steph versus 2021 Steph. And this video has been widely requested, and you guys picked it as the video of the week. And I think this video in this debate is a very interesting topic. Looking back five years ago in the 2016 season, it feels like a long time ago, but it really wasn't that long. And since 2016, a lot has changed. The game has slightly evolved, in large part due to Steph Curry and his great three-point shooting ability. So that begs the question, who is the better Steph Curry, 2016 Steph, or 2021 Steph? That is a question we'll be answering today. So to start this video off, I want to look at 2016 Steph first. And 2016 for the NBA, like I said, was a very special year. You had Kobe's last year. You had Cleveland winning their first championship. You had Golden State coming back with a 3-1 lead, then blowing a 3-1 lead. You had the amazing dunk contest in Toronto. You had a lot of amazing things this year. But maybe the most individual amazing thing was Steph Curry's MVP season, which was unanimous. As this year, he averaged 30 points per game, 6.7 assists, 5.4 boards, 2.1 steals, on 50, 45, and 90 splits. And this year, Steph made an NBA record 402 threes. He led the NBA in points per game, steals, as well as free throw percentage. And his team won 73 games, still an NBA record. Now, this year from Steph was the most efficient high volume season of all time as he's the only player to ever average over 30 points per game and shoot 45% or better from three. He's one of four players to average over 25 points per game on 50-40-90 splits, and he had the highest true shooting percentage for a player who averaged over 30 points per game. And Steph was doing this while sitting out numerous fourth quarters and only playing 34.2 minutes per game, the fifth lowest for an MVP winner in NBA history. So 2016 Steph was obviously impressive, and everyone knows that. But the amazing thing about him, he was a great shooter from everywhere on the floor, great from three, great from the mid range, a great free throw shooter. He could shoot the corner threes, the deep threes, and him shooting half court buzzer beater threes was one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. Also, like I said, his efficiency this year was off the charts. One of the best high volume efficiency players of all time. His handles were second only to Kyrie. His off ball movement cannot be talked about enough. Steph this year was always moving, always cutting, and he seemed to never slow down. Also in the pick and roll, he was great at finding guys like Andrew Bogut, as well as Fessis Azili, or kicking out to shooters like Klay Thompson or Harrison Barnes. And just in general, this version of Steph had a very high team basketball IQ and a very high individual IQ, and I think his leadership goes overlooked. He's not some huge physical guy, and he very rarely ever yells at teammates, but with him, it's basically leading by example and you follow my lead and those leaders go overlooked a lot in NBA history. Tim Duncan was definitely a guy like that. He wouldn't speak much but when he did speak his teammates definitely listened. Also his unselfish ability also contributes to how great a leader he is and like I talked about earlier with his off ball ability Steph this year and any year in his career he does not need the ball to be successful. He can score 30 points by just cutting and moving and doesn't need to dribble the ball a thousand times. And that is something that separates Steph from a lot of the other ball dominant superstars. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is the attention the defense had to give Steph in 2016. 2016 Steph at this point, in the moment, everyone knew this guy is the greatest shooter of all time. And he had defenses panicking all night long. They would double, triple team. They would have one guy just spying on him, follow him everywhere on the court. And even that could not stop him. And by the defense focusing on Steph so much, they gave Klay Thompson, Draymond, Harrison Barnes, even Sean Livingston and Mo Spates so many more open looks. And that is an invaluable skill that does not show up on the stat sheet. Now, a couple of things that stood out to me as critiques. I think Steph this year in the clutch was not his greatest showing. As you guys know, his Warriors team blew a 3-1 lead to the Cavaliers. And Steph in the last three games of that series did not play up to Steph Curry standards. Whether that was due to injury or not, he still didn't play up to Steph Curry standards. Also, one huge thing is how Steph was on defense. I wouldn't say he was a liability, but teams definitely headhunted him and went after him, and they saw him as a mismatch for a lot of bigger players. Now, that's in part for Steph not being as big, and I don't think Steph was ever a great defender, but in 2016, he's not as good a defender as he is later on in his career. And that brings me to my last critique of 2016 Steph, 
and that is his physicality and his overall build. This version of Steph is very skinny. I wouldn't say he's built like a rail, but he's not as big as later Steph Curry, and he hadn't yet put in that hard work in the gym. So I really only have three minor critiques of 2016 Steph, his ability in the clutch, his physicality, as well as his defense. But besides that, 2016 Steph was an amazing, amazing player. Now, Steph in 2021 is also amazing. This year, he's averaging 29.6 points per game, 5.9 assists, 5.4 boards, 1.2 steals on 49, 43, and 93 splits. And at face value, those numbers are obviously impressive. But when you add in the context that Steph's 2021 supporting cast is not nearly as good as his 2016 cast, I mean, it's not even close. James Wiseman's probably his best teammate, who's a rookie. Draymond, who's fallen off majorly offensively. He's still a great defensive guy in intangibles. You have Andrew Wiggins, who's been better this year than past years. You have Kelly Oubre, who went off to a really bad start. And Eric Paschal, who's a solid guy off the bench. In 2016, he had prime Clay, prime Draymond, Andre Iguodala. He had Harrison Barnes, as well as Sean Livingston and Andrew Bowen. So those supporting cast are not even comparable. And in 2021, the spacing Steph has on the court is not nearly as good as it is with Klay Thompson. Also, the attention Steph gets on a nightly basis in 2021, it's much harder than it was in 2016. And I know in 2016, like I said, he still was getting double teamed, getting chased, and teams had a guy trailing him all times. But in 2021, due to the supporting cast, it's basically on steroids. Teams are doubling him, triple teaming him, they're doubling him on inbounds. They're denying him the ball. They're doing all types of things. They're running zones, boxing ones, one through ones, two, three zones that are focused in on him, half court traps, full court traps. They're doing all types of things to bother and deter Steph Curry from scoring on the court. So Steph averaging just under 30 points per game in 2021 with the worst supporting cast and the worst spacing. I think that's definitely something you have to take into account when evaluating Steph in 2021. Now, some things I noticed that Steph has improved on since 2016, I think he's much better physically. If you just compare the pictures of him in 2021 versus 2016, it's really night and day. And you can tell over the past five years, Steph has put a lot of work in the offseason to get better and get stronger so he's not pushed around or bullied on defense or driving the basket at the rim. Also, his basketball IQ, I think, obviously is much improved. Since 2016, he's won two championships and he's made three finals. I think it's only natural with more playoff experience to get smarter, get wiser, and get better in the clutch. I also think he's a much better individual defender. I think team defense has always been pretty good. I wouldn't say he's a great lockdown defender by any means, but he's definitely a solid defender and much improved since 2016, and I think that has to do a lot with him getting stronger and just physically maturing. Now, the million dollar question that all of you came here for, who do I think is better 2016 staff or 2021 Steph, and I think it is very close, but my answer is that 2016 Curry is still the better version of Steph Curry. And I don't want to come off as disrespectful, so I'll put it like this. If 2016 Steph is a 10, 2021 Steph is a 9.8. He's not far behind, and on any given night, he can rival or even surpass 2016 Curry. We've already seen him have some great scoring outbursts, he had 57 points, 62. He had games 11 threes, 9 threes, 7 threes. He's still a great, great player. But 2016 Curry just had that extra it factor. He was super efficient, a great shooter from everywhere. He was the guy who revolutionized the game. And I think that season is so special. And he would give you 30 points on any night. And he would do it almost effortless. Now in 2021 Steph, like I said with the supporting cast, he basically has to go 100 miles an hour every night, and it's pedal to the metal. He has to score 30 points for his team to even have a chance to win. And that brings me back to one more point, that these stats argument for both these players, they're very strong arguments either way. And if Steph this year in 2021 ends up having better stats than 2016 Curry, that will not change my mind or change anything I said in this video. I think 2016 Steph is solidified as the best version of Steph unless something very drastic happens and Steph just goes absolutely nuts this year. Now I am not ruling that out, but 2016 Curry, I just cannot say enough how special that year was as an NBA fan watching it and just appreciating what he did for the game of basketball. 
And I think looking back historically, 2016 Steph, in my opinion, is the most impressive season for my point guard. And when it comes to any player, I think it's up there with the most impressive seasons of all time. So my final verdict is that 2016 Steph is still the better version of Steph Curry. Now that is the end of the video. And if you guys agree with me, let me know why. What do you thought my weakest points were? What do you thought my strongest points were? Let me know if you think 2021 Curry is actually better than 2016 Steph. I would be very interested to see what your point of view is on 2021 Steph being better. So like always, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.